Rich Gonzalez from Prep Caltrack, Track and Field News. We are here with Isa Masiga, Montverde Academy in Florida, here in Los Angeles at the 2023 Gatorade Athlete, National Athlete Awards, our winner for boys track and field. Isam, this year you were dropping some amazing times in the sprints. Uh, wind aided or not, when we see a couple of times in the 9.8s, we see a couple on the 9.9s, we see the wind legal 1997 for 200, we see several 10 O's win legal. We've never seen that before from a high schooler. How much did you surprise yourself, if any, this year? Um, I think, you know, I surprised myself a lot because, you know, obviously I knew coming to Florida, I would, I knew it was going to instantly just make me better, just having a better environment, better coaching, um, better teammates. I didn't know it was going to be by that much. So, you know, I even surprised myself, but I feel like, you know, after my performance at New Balance indoors with the 16 and the 200, that's what kind of opened doors for me and flipped the switch. And that's when I knew, I mean, I gained that confidence and I was just ready to go outdoor. That was a perfect, you know, lead up to outdoor and I was just ready to go. I was ready to go every meet. I had it switched on and I was just, I was locked in and I was ready to go every single meet. Isam, you transferred in from out of state uh, and obviously you had a big, big, big breakthrough your senior year at yeah. Montverde. First off, what, what led you to make the move to Florida to attend Montverde Academy? Yeah, I mean, I just kind of, you know, um, I saw in, in St. Louis, it's not really um, ideal conditions to run year round. I knew I wanted to make a switch and focus more on track um, for my senior year. You know, I was playing soccer before, so I knew I just wanted to focus on that. And in St. Louis, training year round is not really possible because of the long winters and the cold winters. And my season at Principia, at my old school, only ended up being like a month long. So I knew I needed to make a switch. So I knew, you know, coming down to Florida with year-round beautiful weather, I knew that would uh, make the, give me what I wanted, which was year-round training. And going to a program like, you know, Montverde Academy that already had, you know, stars like Micah, like Zaire, um, Micaiah, uh, people that have already, you know, excelled at that school, that would push me to, you know, push me out of my norm. Was that the biggest difference where maybe the talent was always there, but now you had the chance to showcase it because you had that training weather, because you had that opportunity? Yes, the talent, yeah, I feel like the talent was always there. I mean, the times I was running like 10, 4, 20.76, that was off like, you know, only a couple weeks of training. And I, I knew I had something more in me. I knew I had something more in me. I just needed to, you know, put myself in a situation where I'd be able to excel. And, you know, having a great coach like uh, Coach Peary and having those teammates just was all the difference, all I needed, I feel like. As far as your race, I mean, it always comes down to fractions of a second, you know, hundreds, occasionally, maybe even thousands of a second. Um, what would you say has been the area of your sprinting that you've improved on the most? And what would you say is probably the one area in the future you need to work on the most? Yeah, I would say my acceleration has gotten tremendously better. Um, if you look at my old races, I'm kind of with... Not like, I'm with fast athletes, but athletes that shouldn't really be next to me at like 30, 20 meters. So now you see that I'm able to separate a lot more. And I feel like my top end was always my natural gift. So working the little um, tweaks in the beginning was all, I feel like that made the biggest difference. Like coming out the blocks and just knowing how to properly accelerate, knowing how to drive. I feel like that's been, my was my weakest point. I've made it one of my strongest points. How much time do you spend in the weight room? I spent a lot of time, um, especially in the fall, for fall conditioning, like for the preparing. We spent a lot of time, like after almost every workout, we would go out and lift. Not as much in season because you don't want to lift as much in season because you, you know, set yourself up already in the fall. So we, we lift we lift pretty consistently, I would say like twice a week, I would say, somewhere around there. So yeah. So outdoor season, we're in April. You start dropping times into the Corgi Crowfoot meet. You drop a, <laughs> an incredible time. Yeah. You had quite a few very close together. In this sport, fast sprint times, people are like, ah, the time was, you know, there's always skeptics. Yeah. Were you hearing it at the very beginning yeah. from people who were doubtful? Of course, like, random kid comes out and runs 983. Yeah, first thing I would say is, yeah, it's fake. Or someone's, someone's up with this kid, you know, he beat Noah Lyles, like, what? Yeah. I feel like that's the one thing that kind of grabbed people's attention to be like, okay, maybe this kid's legit. But I feel like I ran it against some high schoolers or... I feel like, no, yeah, me running against Noah definitely made it like, okay, this kid might be legit. And then I knew I had to follow up. I was like, yeah. Once I had that, I had it switched on. Um, next week, you know, 989, 199, uh, then that's when I was like, yep, I'm, you know, I'm in my bag right now. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to go crazy for the rest of the season. And that's exactly what I did. So at first, I had a similar response. But yeah. then when I saw, wait a minute, he beat Noah head on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was stunning. Yeah. My understanding, uh, if I'm wrong here, but you also... Do your coach have a bit of exposure to Noah? I guess 
he, he's worked with, with they, they know each other in a sense, so yes. you've had a chance to practice once or twice, maybe with Noah, is that correct? Um, I was able to meet him a couple times before, okay, so gotcha. um, at Melrose Games, when I went up there and I ran in a, uh, the 60 in the high school section, uh, I was able to meet him up there, I saw him at um, Tom Jones. Um, at University of Florida for that meet and you know my coach she has a connection with uh, Noah because towards the end of my coach's professional career that's when Noah signed with Adidas so they were on the same training group so they know each other and coach Brahman um, Noah, Noah allows his coach was my my coach's coach so like they're all like in the same group together <coughs> that day when you beat Noah Lyles yeah what went through your mind right afterward I mean People like to like kind of hype it up. I mean, honestly, I walked into there like it was a normal day. That's the only way I would be able to, I knew I would be able to execute. Cause if I came in thinking, oh, he's gonna be here. That's exactly how I approach every race. I just go out there and I'm just, you know, I'm just locked in. I'm in a zone whenever I get to the track. So I really wasn't too distracted with that. Obviously like it has it carries some weight. I mean, Noah yes. Louse is lining up next to me and that's my first time, you know, racing against someone of that level. But I knew I couldn't get caught up in that and I had to stay, you know, locked in and just, focus on my lane and then after the race I could do whatever I wanted to so I knew I still had to execute and you know just line up enough blocks got a great block start and just kept driving and I, I knew I knew it was either he was gonna fly past me with his crazy top end speed or you know I would beat him that's what I was thinking the whole time I was like he's gonna fly past me at any moment at the 80 meter mark or I really just did that crossed the line looked at the club and I was like yeah pretty good <laughs> pretty good so Looking a little bit ahead, yeah. you got to look back first. Yeah. The fact that tri citizenship, correct? Yes, sir. So give us a story there. Uh, yeah, so my mom um, from Zambia. I live in Zambia currently, but I grew up in the United States. So I spent the first nine years of my life in Atlanta, Georgia. That's where I grew up. Moved to Zambia 2013, and then um, 2017 is when I moved to St. Louis. And then um, my dad, he's from Suriname, a small little country top of South America so um, yeah that's that's my story of where I got the three different uh, countries so I got three passports um, and yeah so I ended up uh, deciding to run for uh, Suriname and yeah. how did you get a decision? I, I felt like I felt really connected uh, to that you know to my, to my, that's my that's my culture you know what I'm saying and um, my dad's legacy just continuing it because he's a very you know big name there and I just kind of wanted to represent you know um, a different you know uh, category of just people, you know, just a different demographic, different fan base, and I feel like it's great to just tap in and just be, you know, a global name, and I felt like I made a, a great decision with that. What's the next step competition-wise for you? So next step, uh, I'm going to be at Brazil for South American Championships, and then, you know, World Championships in Budapest, so we're ready to go. I'm excited. There we go, there we go. Yes, uh, just wrapping up real quick here, uh, going ahead, you mentioned as far as the World Championships, that's, that's in the plan, uh, obviously, uh, with your speed. You're well on your way there. Yeah. In terms of this weekend, this week Gatorade. Yeah. There are some great candidates out there in track and field. I mean, yourself, Simeon Birnbaum, were two of the big heavyweights. Did you think you had a really good chance? Uh, did you, were you watching closely? Were you much aware? What were you thinking? I wasn't really watching closely. Um, I personally felt like you know I deserved it. Um, I don't feel like you can compare me to anyone that's ever ran track in high school. I feel like I established myself. You know all the way through starting you know January 28th when I ran 659 ever since then I'm just I've shown consistency I've shown that you know I can run with the college athletes I I didn't even run against my the high schoolers for the outdoor season I was just running against pros and collegiates I was holding my own you know I feel like I did everything right to you know to make myself as the best you know high school track athlete in you know boys history so I felt like you know I deserved it and I really wasn't too scared. I mean, Simeon's a, he's a great athlete, and it's, it's fun watching him, watching him run his miles and all his events, and, you know, I like his swag that he has, so I have a lot of respect for him, but, I, you know, I felt like, you know, I deserved it. Simeon, indeed, is amazing, did some amazing yeah, things, but we've never seen, as, just to echo what you said, we've never seen anyone yeah. do what you did this year. It's very, just stunning, so congratulations. Yeah, thank you Once so again, much. our Gatorade National Player of the Year for track and field, Isama Singa out of Florida. Yes, sir. What are you looking forward to most these next two days? Oh, just having fun, you know. These are great athletes out here with me. I'm out here, you know, Max Clark, Juju Watkins, like all these great athletes, you know. It's cool to see them all through Instagram, but now we're all like, you know, the best of the best in our fields, and we're all just able to just connect and just be kids, you know. We're great athletes, obviously, with a lot of talent, but at the end of the day, we're just, you know, we're all just, you know, teenagers just having fun and just figuring out our ways through sports and life and just, you know, enjoying the opportunities that come to us. So we're just having fun. That's all it is. Outstanding. Isama Singa. Enjoy. Have fun. Thank you so much.